Welcome back into Wisconsin Women. We promised you a conversation with owner Bill. We're here at William Thomas Custom Jewelers, and here he is. We've got Bill. Love being here. Thanks for having us. You bet. So we're going to do a little get to know your jeweler segment. I've talked Bill into doing this because I find your story and your commitment and your theory, the way that you approach business to be really special and really unique. And I want to share some of that with our viewers today. So the first thing I want to talk about is just some of the challenges that you're facing in the industry. There's a lot of challenges out there for many yeah. small businesses. There are. Uh, I would say for us over the last 26 years, the changes have been greatly to do with the internet and bringing things, bringing the competitive environment down to pretty low margins, um, which I think is great for the consumer. Um, we've always worked under a low margin platform, but when you look at all the online stores for diamonds and uh, their created diamonds now and the lab grown diamonds, there's a lot out there for people, a lot of resources for them to educate themselves, to learn and understand what their choices are. Yeah. Um, much easier. Absolutely. And some of the things that, the way in which the industry has, has really changed. I mean, you first got into this business at uh, 10 years old is when you really started finding a passion. What is your story? How did you know at that early age that you knew you wanted to do this? So uh, my mother, uh, married my stepfather when I was 10. And his, his parents in New London, Wisconsin, owned Furman Jewelers, which they had for about 47 years. When I met them and went and saw the jewelry making, and I always loved working with my hands. I loved Legos as a kid. I liked building um, you know, Lincoln Logs. I saw the hand creation and things you could build with your hands, and I knew that I wanted to make jewelry. I love uh, it was, since I was 10 years old, it's all I wanted to do, which made it a struggle getting through school, I just wanted to get to work, um, but I did manage to get through and, and here we are. And so having been in the industry for so long and being at the point in your career that you're at now, obviously a, a lot has changed, but you've also learned so much. If you could tell young Bill something in the beginning of your career oh boy. that you know now, yeah. what would it be? I didn't have any business formal training. Uh, I knew how to make jewelry, I knew how to talk to people. I knew how to be good to people, and that is about where my business knowledge uh, was. So back when I started in 94, there was a lot of uh, business to be had. There was the dot-com money. There was a lot of people throwing money at jewelry. It was a great time to start a jewelry store because everyone was looking for more and more and more. What I didn't know and wish I'd known from a business perspective was about planning for a downturn. Uh, because I thought it's just gonna be like this all the time. Right. This is easy, we're selling lots of jewelry and we keep selling more every year. We'll just keep going and going and going. But then it did change. Um, the, the floor fell out for a while there and we had to learn how to recover and how to be smarter fiscally. Yeah. And that was a big thing that I think entrepreneurs don't think about is the downturn or when it's not a good time. And really planning for it to your point. Yeah. If you had advice for an aspiring jewelry designer, would that be it or what else would you say? That would be it, but primarily I would tell, you know, in my industry specifically, uh, there's a lot of integrity and honesty that are huge. Um, not everyone has that, that reputation, but that's something that you must be honest and open and transparent with people and be very honest. I can't say it more clearly mm -hmm. because it'll never do you wrong be honest. Um, it's hard when once you are not honest and once something happens to blemish your reputation, it's very hard to clear that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always you, you can always do some things to, to lose ground, but it's very hard to come back from mm -hmm. a bad reputation. And that's been a big thing for you and one of the things that we talk about often is you like to be a platform for education. Yeah. And that's one of the things that your customers say, and we've interviewed some, several of them time and time again, is the experience. It's, this is not a, a sales platform. This yeah. is a, a place to learn about what you're trying to do. So as we head into break here, I want to make sure that we give people a little bit of an idea about what that looks like. Because you don't come in and there's not cases and cases of jewelry to choose from. You have some things out here. Yeah. In fact, I'm wearing these fabulous earrings today that I'm in love yeah. with. <laughs> uh, but th that's not how it works. You don't stand there and sell them a piece of jewelry that's yeah. on the floor. Most likely, uh, people come in, they walk around, and they see we have a lot of things for sale, but they come in, see that, and that sort of assures them that we know what we're doing. 
Um, we're not fly by night. And then we sit down in my office and sort of figure out what they're looking for and how to use their pieces and parts or just create something new or use ideas in the case to build some new idea. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's how it works here. We always are sitting down at my desk going over and talking about the whole experience. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you can work from, you know, the smallest of budgets up to yeah. the largest. So yeah. the sky's the limit. And, and you've done some great work for yeah. myself and, and some of the ladies here. Thanks for sharing your story. You bet. We Thank you. We appreciate it. Bill Furman with William Thomas Jewelers. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. You're watching Wisconsin Women. We'll be right back.